The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, I pray not only for them, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, last Sunday was a great day in our parish. We had to send out invitations to our first ever Alleluia Afternoon, which was a big way of celebrating the Easter season. It took place in my backyard in the rectory in, in Exeter. And we had 236 people RSVP for the event. So with 236 people coming over, I started to panic. And I realized I had to go out and get more hamburgers and hot dogs for everybody. And it, we had everything prepared, though. We had face painting and games for the kids. We had this great big 50-foot rosary made out of styrofoam pool buoys that we all prayed together. And uh, we had the Here on Earth worship band set up their music equipment. And we had this great big outdoor concert. Everything was prepared, but then the weather people started saying, it's going to be 95 degrees last Sunday. And so I started panicking again. And I, I emailed everyone and said, bring water bottles. We'll have water stations. We'll keep everyone hydrated. But of course, the weather people have no idea what they're talking about. And it ended up being a very cool here by the coast. It was like very pleasant, low 80s. It was a picture perfect summer day. And 236 people were in my backyard with picnic blankets and lawn chairs. And it was quite the party. It really was a great Alleluia afternoon. Well, in, our, in one of our readings today, we actually hear the very last lines in the whole Bible. It's the last chapter of the book of Revelation. And the Bible ends with an invitation to a party. The spirit and the bride say, come to the party. The, let the hearer say, come to the party. Let the one who is hungry and the one who is thirsty, come to the party. Well, where is this party? It's not in my backyard. It's up in heaven. It's the new heavens and the new earth that Jesus invites us into to celebrate for all eternity God's great love for us. And what are we going to eat at this party? Well, not hamburgers and hot dogs. This is the great wedding feast. This is where we're going to be able to have juicy, rich foods and choice wines to our heart's content. And what are we going to be doing? I don't know. You can play games and do face painting for, to your heart's content. Anything is possible because we are all going to be praying together. We're going to be playing together, not just singing Alleluia for an afternoon, but singing Alleluia for all eternity, celebrating God's great victory over death, God's great victory over everything that keeps us sad and holds us bound in this life. It, it sounds like quite the party. Let's go. It's going to be wonderful. Really, this is what Jesus invites us into as well. At the Last Supper, the night before he dies, Jesus is inviting his disciples into a relationship that he has with the Father from all eternity. And he says, you know, this, this meal that we've just ate, eaten together, this, this um, Eucharist that we've just celebrated, it's wonderful. But it's just a foretaste. It's just an appetizer for the heavenly feast that we're going to celebrate together one day. And that's what Jesus invites his disciples into. Into this feast of love that he has had from all eternity with his father up in heaven. And we know that that love between father and son is so real. It's so intense. It underlies the whole universe. 
that in a way, we, we, well, in, not just in a way, but in reality, we call that love another person, the Holy Spirit. So that who God is, is this trinity of persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, united in a dynamic relationship of love. And that's what Jesus is inviting us into, into a relationship with love, of love with God, so that we can all be one, just as the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one. Do we fully understand the Trinity? Probably not, but that's okay. It's going to be great. That's the point. And yet we know that some people are going to refuse that invitation to love, that invitation to the party. It's a bit of a mystery why that happens, but some people do it. Even at the Last Supper, one of the apostles, Judas, didn't stay to hear this invitation of Jesus. He had already departed and gone out into the night to betray Jesus. Whatever problem he had with Jesus and the other disciples, he wasn't able to bring himself to forgiveness and reconciliation. So he ended up all by himself. Out in, 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 he ended up you know, being more worried about counting 30 pieces of silver and, and then, then staying in relationship with the Lord. Everything is about relationship when it comes to the Lord. You know, sometimes we get this sense that being up in heaven, maybe we'll be sitting on a cloud somewhere playing a harp all by ourselves. Well, that's really fun. No, anyone who knows God knows that God is this eternally dynamic and relational being. It's going to be endlessly varied, endlessly exciting, endlessly new what we get to experience in him. But when we go off by ourselves like Judas, we don't get to experience that. Or we can become envious of those who get invited to the party. That's what happens with the people who are listening to St. Stephen, the first martyr of our church. St. Stephen is out there inviting everyone to the party. The poor, the hungry, the, even Gentiles, non-Jewish people, those who are not usually invited to such things. He says everyone is invited into this relationship with Jesus. But the people get upset by that they begin to cover their ears they don't want to listen to him and they rush at Stephen and they begin to stone him to death in the middle of our alleluia afternoon last Sunday I got a call from Father Jason who's the uh, vicar general for the diocese he's the the rector of the cathedral in Manchester and he called me and said are you having some big party at the parish or something and I said wow They're hearing about this party all the way from Manchester. This is amazing. I said, yes, Father Jason, we're having a great party, and even you're invited. Come to Exeter. Come to this party. And he said, well, that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling because we got a call here at the diocese from some of your neighbors, and they're complaining about how loud this party is and how loud the music is. And... I, and I found out later that they, they even called the police to issue a, a noise warning. You know, those Catholics who are always partying, we can't take it anymore. And I kind of got a little bit upset when I heard this. And so I, my first reaction was to go up out and turn the music up. But then I said, well, I'm a priest. I better not do that. But I didn't turn the music down either because I said, you know what? This is a wonderful party we're having. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It's not like we're playing loud music in the middle of the night. It's our property. And so uh, what we're going to do is the next time we have an event like this, and we'll certainly do it again because it was a wonderful time, uh, we're going to send an invitation to our neighbors. And then maybe they'll come to the party and enjoy themselves as well. Either that or we're going to take the loud uh, speakers and and put it over the fence into their backyard so they can hear it better. I'm not sure yet. One or the other. Well, this is the mystery of how can you have a party this great and yet some people will remain outside complaining about it. And and, and yet we do it all the time. You know, we, we know there's this invitation to relationship, invitation to God's love. And yet so often we refuse the invitation, we stay outside, we, we say, well, to accept God's invitation might mean I have to forgive my neighbor who's a real pain, or my family member, I'm not ready, ready to do that. Or, or we say, uh, you know, I, I don't, thanks for the invitation, but I'm too busy, I'm, I, I'm t- I have too much going on in life, I'm too tired, I, I, uh, I, you know, all the excuses that we have in life to stay out of God's love. It's too boring, we say, or I want to hold on to my 30 pieces of silver, whatever it is. 
And this is the mystery. How can we stay out of God's love when there's this wonderful thing ahead of us? In, in the last book of his great Christian allegory, the Chronicles of Narnia, C.S. Lewis talks about a great battle that takes place at the end of time between the forces of good and the forces of evil. And, and the forces of good are actually defeated. And like the first martyr, St. Stephen, these last martyrs are arrested and rounded up and condemned to death. And they are thrown through the door of this stable where they're, they're supposed to be someone ready to put them to death on the other side. But when they go through the door of this stable, they find that it's not a doorway to death. It actually is a doorway to life. And when they go through expecting to find themselves in a dark, cramped stable, instead they find themselves in this whole country filled with light. And it's... It's Narnia, it's the, the world, but it's, but it's a new Narnia. It's the new heaven and the new earth where everything is beautiful and everything is perfected and everything is renewed. And they can't believe this beautiful country that they found themselves in. But a little bit later, some, some of the people on the bad side are kind of thrown through the doorway as well. And they're not able to see this beautiful country. They think they're in the dark stable. And, and, they, and they say to the people, look around at this beautiful country. And they say, well, we, we're in this dark stable. We can't see anything. And, and people say, well, look, here are some beautiful flowers growing in this country. Smell them. And they say, why are you putting these rotting vegetables from the stable in our face? Stop it. And well, here's some beautiful spring water to drink. Drink it. And they say, oh, why are you giving us dirty water from an animal trough? Stop it. And it's like their ears are closed and their eyes are blinded to this beautiful country all around them. Well, the people who can see the country kind of leave these people behind in their self-created prison because they want to explore this beautiful new land. And they keep going forward and they find that they can run and run all day and not grow weary. They can swim up waterfalls and explore hundreds of miles of this beautiful country in a single day. And, and they keep seeing all their loved ones that they had left behind who had passed away. And there are all these beautiful reunions. And they begin to see animals and places that they had left behind all restored to them. And it's a beautiful thing. And finally, they come to a golden gate. And they go through this golden gate. And on the other side of the gate is a whole another land of Narnia, even more beautiful than the one they just left. And that keeps going on and on. It's like rings of an onion that keep going out. And they keep, there's, there's more and more and it never stops. And they keep saying, onward and upward, let's keep going. Further up and further in. There's so much more to see. And that's just one imaginative uh, attempt to describe what the new heaven and the new earth might be like. We really don't know. We'll have to find out when we get there. But it's not going to be boring. It's not going to be monotonous. It's, not, it's going to be endlessly varied, endlessly beautiful, endlessly new. We're going to be in relationship with each other. We're going to be united in the same love that God has for us, that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have enjoyed from all eternity. It's going to be an alleluia afternoon. It's going to be perfectly 84 degree weather every day. Even my neighbors are going to be there. We're all going to be united. And you're invited too. So come.